right. I'm beginning this video before the explanation. The topic today is timers. I should say I'm learning this. So I'm learning as I go, probably making at least a few mistakes. I'll get to it in a moment, but in assembly language, I used some textbook type code, which is supposed to show the use of a timer and setting it up with all the other associated bits in various different registers. So I'll get to showing that in a moment. This is a pretty simple piece of code. It has one output and currently that's coming out of RB5 and I was thinking it was going to be visibly noticeable that it's kind of like a blink sketch it has a 50% on time and a 50% off time duty cycle but this is not really detectable with the human eye you can see it is lit up here, uh, but it's it's blinking so fast it's not it's not apparent. So what I did is I hooked up my fancy pants oscilloscope. So here it is here, and um, I'm not great at using this scope. But if I change the sample rate. Hopefully I can show it is some type of square wave. It's about as good as I can get. So, did I achieve success with my code? Did it work the way I was intending? The way it was supposed to work? Now you can judge. Good morning. So I did things in reverse order. You saw my breadboard set up. Nothing too fancy. I had my fancy pants oscilloscope. I had my oscilloscope hooked up to port B RB5. And I was showing that I think I believe this code is working for me. Now this is a textbook example, figuratively speaking, or maybe literally speaking, of how to set up a timer. I've been studying this. I created another video on this earlier this week. If you look in the video description below, I should have left a link for this video, which is unlisted on my channel. It's actually in my PIC programming playlist, not to be confused with my PIC 18F. This is wrong. Oh yeah, 4525. So this is a separate playlist. It's more interesting. It shows a lot more interesting practical examples of how to use this chip, particularly while I make use of certain opcodes and explore their different use. But anyway, just look in the video description below if you want to see an in-depth video of me going through and reading all of the bits in the different timer registers. This is a very boring video, but if you're trying to learn, it might be helpful. So back to this. This is an example of how to use timers. I'm still learning so I better not explain too much because I might say things incorrectly. So I will mostly just read the code as it's written here and maybe a brief explanation will follow. Not sure yet. So ignore all of this. You can see previous videos if you want to know how I set up my chip. 
there's some ADC settings and the default setting is that some of the pins are analog so you've got to make them digital and you have to turn the ADC off. This sets up the oscillator. This chip has an internal oscillator. Okay, um, the first line of code bit clear f trice b5 so that's port b pin 5 rb5 is an output pin just using one pin um, then move lw 0x08 and this hex value will be moved to the T0 con. Now that stands to be looked at. Alright, so the number 0x08 in hexadecimal looks like this, where there's only a high on uh, the fourth bit. 0, 1, 2, the third bit, excuse me. The third bit, 0, 1, 2, three of the T0 con timer zero control register. So as it's set up the timer is off, that bit is cleared, and the only bit that is set is this PSA timer zero prescaler assignment bit, and it's given a high, timer zero prescaler is not assigned, timer zero clock input bypasses prescaler. So it seems in this example that the prescaler is not being used. It would be good maybe to cross-reference that with one of those um, uh, charts, like one of these charts. Maybe it will get to showing. Here is the 8-bit mode and 16-bit mode. And it shows the pre, or excuse me, the programmable prescaler over here. These bits are the assignment bits for the prescaler, all these 0 and 1 combinations. So that's what those are. And I guess that's going to determine the prescaler value. But even more, there's the OR gate. And assuming I'm correct, this PSA is the only bit in the code that currently is set high. So let's look at the chart. So here's the PSA here. And I guess this is getting a high. I won't comment because I don't fully understand it yet. But anyway, uh, this is the output bit. Um, then a the working register is loaded up with that value with only one bit selected and then that value is loaded into the T0 con register next is a label here it takes the literal value 0xff which is probably all ones and puts that into the high byte now according to this, I have to go back and look at the T0con register. Uh, this 0x08 will set it up in 16-bit mode with no prescaler. So that means we're looking at this chart, 16-bit mode with no prescaler. Perhaps that's why this PSA bit is set high. Just guessing. But it says we're putting all ones in the timer high byte, TMR0H. TMR0H is getting all ones. The timer low byte, which is basically getting loaded up here, is getting this F2 value. So what does that look like? It looks like this, a decimal 242. So I, I'm not clear on why that number was chosen. But that's what this is, and it's the low byte. So the high byte gets all ones, and then the low byte gets 
something less. For whatever reason. I don't know yet. Okay, and then bit clear f int con tmr oif. Clear timer interrupt flag bit. I'm going to look this up in the data sheet. I stand to be corrected, but I believe this is like the only bit in this particular register. Or am I wrong? Yeah, I'm so wrong about that. Int con interrupt control register. Uh, this is really one of the most important bits here. It enables all interrupts or disables them. Of course, this video isn't really supposed to be dealing with interrupts yet. I'm talking about timers still. But anyway, this TMR0IF, we're bit clearing that in the intcon register. So it's basically a flag bit. Uh, let's look at what that is. TR, TMR0IF, just to refresh ourselves. TMR0IF, overflow interrupt flag bit. If it gets set to a 1, TMR0, timer 0 register, has overflowed, must be cleared in software. Well, I suppose if it must be cleared in software, that's why it's being cleared here intentionally. Does this actually overflow while it iterates through the code? I don't know. I'm not learned enough to know what's happening. But I guess either as a precaution or maybe as a necessity, the timer interrupt flag is being cleared here. And then BTG, this bit, is being toggled, whatever state it was in. Now here's, this is still section, this is section 10 on interrupts. So this is getting a little away from timers, although that's all related. But anyway, this is figure 10.1, pick 18 interrupt logic. In my particular chip, it lo this looks a little different in other chips, but the low priority interrupt is down here. So I guess this TMR0IF flag bit appears down here in an AND gate. And I better not just run my mouth, but having looked at the different registers in my other video, a lot of these bits that show up in these charts are flag bits, which I believe flag different interrupt instances, particularly in what was those peripheral, the PIR registers, something like that. So that's knowing that they're flag bits kind of makes it more understandable. Kind of like, oh, okay, it just sums up the fact that a lot of these are just interrupt instances. So this TMR0IF is an overflow interrupt flag bit. Again, it has to be cleared in software. So maybe that's why it's being cleared here. Then um, port B, RB5 is being toggled. And then bit set F, T0 con, timer on. So it's starting the timer here. Okay, so this is the interrupt control register, int con. And I believe there's three different timers in this chip. We're using T0 con in this example. And bit 7 of that enables the timer and it stops the timer. I think that was evident in my previous video when I was doing things in C language. It can be seen that the timer is being turned off, or basically being turned on and set to zero. So that actually fills in some information as to how that works. I guess you can turn the timer on and off, or start it and stop it. That's maybe the better words starting and stopping the timer and you do that by setting this bit the TMR 
zero on bit in the T zero con register when it's timer zero that we're using. So then there's this next label called again bit test file skip if set. So it's testing int con and this timer here tmr zero if. So this was clearing this flag bit, this interrupt flag bit, even in 8-bit mode and 16-bit mode. It even shows this timer 0 if as an overflow flag bit. Just wanted to read this again. Just TMR 0 if timer 0 overflow interrupt flag bit. When it gets a 1, TMR0 register has overflowed, must be cleared in software. But that seems to be critical to this piece of code. It's testing whether there was an overflow. And it'll skip over if there's no overflow. I guess if it is overflowed, it will be set. And if it's set, it'll skip this next line. So I guess it gets stuck in here a little bit while the timer is counting. And then once it overflows, I guess the bit will set. And then it'll skip this bra. And it'll bit clear. It'll stop the timer. And it'll go back to here. So I'm thinking out loud which is dangerous when I'm recording. But I think I can make a few conclusions. I can draw a few conclusions here. So this is like an initialization stage. So we're just going to pick a bit as an output. Uh, we're going to make some decisions as to whether which timer we want to use. We're going to use T0 con. Make it 16-bit. Internal clock, no prescaler. And then here we're loading it was a single bit actually into the T0 con register. So we're configuring our timer 0 with no prescaler. So to me this is like an initialization of the timer zero register. But then this stage here, at least these four lines of code, uh, is, is like a loading phase. It's loading up these timers, the low and the high byte, with a specific value. The high byte gets all ones. This one, the low byte doesn't. And then just to be sure, it clears that interrupt flag bit. And then it toggles the state of this output pin that was designated. And I'm just guessing that it's going to do this as the timer is counting. And it'll happen where it goes through the counting of, of the timer. So really if it was slowed down it would look like a blinking of an LED but it seems to be going at a faster rate than that. Um, so it clears the interrupt flag bit then toggles RB5 and then bit set F T0 con then it starts the timer. So this really starts the timer, and then once the timer is started, it goes into this, I would say it's a subroutine, and it hangs here until the timer overflows. When it overflows, the timer is stopped, and it branches back to here for the timer to be loaded up again with these uh, high and low bytes values. 
So how the question I have is how would I modify this so that I could slow the on and off cycle, the duty cycle of this RB5 bit so that I could see it, so that I could watch it blinking. Well, I, if I started experimenting, I might load up the low and high byte, even though they're pretty loaded up already. But I'm guessing the next solution would be to use the prescaler, which, so far as I understand at this point, is going to uh, reduce the clock speed. Time to look that up on Google. What does a prescaler do? A prescaler is an electronic counting circuit used to reduce a high frequency electrical signal to a lower frequency by integer division. So I don't know how to do this yet, but I know my code is not even using the prescaler. So what happens if we start using the prescaler and then load up the timers even more? Can we get this down to blink at a detectable rate according to the human eye. So in conclusion we've got loading up of the timer, flagging the overflow, and then starting and stopping the timer, and then going back through that process again by loading the timer, toggling that bit, before we do that, just clear the interrupt flag just in case maybe. Start the timer. Watch the flag bit till it overflows. When it does, when it overflows, stop the All right. I found this doing a Google search online. And it's a it's a very similar code example, but in this case, timer three is being used. Now, having looked at the different timer registers, I already talked about how I made a different video on that already. Very, very boring. It's an unlisted video on my channel. Should be a link below. But anyway, I know that the different timers in the chip are set up a little bit differently for lack of more detailed explaining. They're set up a little differently and that can even be seen with some of the different um, I don't know bits and register, registers that are showing up here. So I'll leave a link for this below. I want to study this myself. Uh, every time I take my popular textbook and I I Google its examples, I tend to get um, this guy's work. It's all over the internet. Um, Hsiao Lung Chan, probably saying that wrong, in Taiwan, who seems to be a bit of an expert on teaching this. And so I'll leave that as a link below. Uh, not to judge people, I'm certainly not doing that, but I just call it like I see it. It looks like he actually takes a very popular textbook and re, re rewrites some of the code and makes it his own. So it's very close to plagiarizing, but it's uh, kind of a modification of the popular text example that's out there already. And I don't judge because I mean, how are people supposed to come up with this type of code on their own? I think the only way to really do that is to read the most popular texts. So we can't be too criticized for plagiarizing. Anyway, I'm going off into a rant. But this is below, and uh, I don't know. Should I make a video on this? Who knows? But uh, hopefully that gets into explaining timers as I explore this subject. Thanks for watching.